Hey guys, Lemon02, currently doing a, a very short video series. We, we failed to catch the first match. We're in sideboards right now of a Red Deck Wins deck. Um, we're playing against a Loam deck that Michelle Wong, a Bug Loam deck that Michelle was piloting, uh, Michelle Wong. And uh, what I wanted to show is one of the ways to beat this deck, which is just to go underneath it. Um, don't allow it to get to the mid game or late game, because that's where it shines. And it's probably one of the better archetypes in the mid to late game. But if you can stall them early, then I think you can tend to beat them. So our board plan um, was pretty simple, a lot of non-basic hate, so we've got the, the Blood Moon effect, uh, we've got Price of Progress, we've got Magus of the Moon, I don't think we brought anything else in, uh, we ended up cutting a Mountain because we're going to be on the draw, Incendiary Flow, and the Stigma Lasher because, oh correct, we also brought an Everlasting Torment, um, took out Hellrider, Incendiary Flow, Mountain, and Stigma Lasher uh, for this package right here. Which I think will tend to make the deck better. She's probably going to bring a bunch of life gain in. And I think just generally having damage on these crappy creatures stack as Wither is going to be better. Um, in prevention of any life gain. We've already got some of that main. I know we cut one piece of it. Alright, so this hand's good. This is a hand that we I think we have to keep. Um, it has a lot of anti-life gain. So if she tries to go for like... The way she wins these games is she has to get an early threat down. Um, we don't have removal. In hand, so if she plays like a death right shaman, that can be dangerous for us. Um, so this hand is not great if she has a death right shaman. Then we're hoping to grab like a, a very efficient burn spell off the top to kill it. Um, then we have to forego casting out the Sergo Bell Striker. Um, if we do that, could just be discard. Um, Duress gets Skullcracker or Flames. I don't know which she grabs. Possibly Flames, but I think Skullcrack may even be right. So I'm not going to be casting Flames for a while. I don't know if she runs Duress main or if she boarded in for this matchup. Um, I don't really care for Discard unless you can kill their whole hand. She gets the more expensive spell. Interesting, because I'm not going to cast that on Curve as my hand plays out right now. That was a good pickup. So we'll cast out the Zergo and say go. In the next turn, we have a decently large decision on whether we cast out the Teetering Peaks or not, or play out the Teetering Peaks. Well, at this juncture, we're probably just going to go with Hellspark Elemental. Because I'd rather have the damage from Teetering Peaks, which is essentially counter-free damage, get through. She could daze this if she wanted to, but I think that would be a bad use of the card. We'll save the Teetering Peaks. Um... Probably block the Zergo, the non-trampling threat. And she'll probably get a forest here, I would assume. She may or may not have Finks. If she does, I mean, maybe leaving the skull crack up was better, but I mean, I think we have to press our advantage and assume she probably has to find the Finks. Obviously on the draw, we're a lot weaker. She gets an island. Interesting. Maybe she has a Jace. That doesn't seem like it'd be good here. Maybe she has Chill. Chill could be it. Yeah, and, and given that um, rationale, we probably boarded incorrectly. If she runs Chill, we definitely want the Reb and the, and the Blast. So we can get Chill out of the way. Could be a Green Sun Zenith here, too. The blue is interesting to me. I'm kind of shocked she went for blue. It's a lot of basic lands. Ancestral Vision is not a card that scares me. I mean, if I'm not winning by then, then I'm losing. I think I'm just going to Teetering Peaks here and see if uh, she kills it. If you have the kill spell, you want to use it. Abrupt Decay? Okay. Okay, well, we'll do no damage here, which stinks. Um, we're going to Skull Crack on her turn and save the most efficient spells. She already knows I have Crack, so there's credence to doing it during the upkeep to force her to counter it there, so I know my spells will resolve next turn. Um, we're kind of actually, randomly enough, hoping to hit a land drop, ideally off of Abbott. Um, she could blow up my land if she wants. That seems very poor to me, though. 
It seems like she should have gotten a forest there. I don't know her version of the deck. It could be uh, running less green cards, but I think green tends to make the deck come together. We'll skull crack end step here. Uh, if she has a counter, she may counter it. Or she may just let it go through. I'm going to play out the Abbot here. Uh, this is likely to fetch a counter out of her hand. Okie doke. On one card, I doubt she has that much that's relevant, though. She could have a Fatal Push for this. Hopefully not. We can do a lot of damage next turn of note. Or she could have Go for the Throat. Um, Alright, well, she has something. She has a Go for the Throat. Or a Hero's Downfall. Her hand lined up pretty well against this one. Um, and now she is hellbent. Alrighty. So you're down to two counters. You have two mana, but you're blind flipping off the top to draw into something. This is not the most... I mean, unless she drew something very good here, it's not the most optimal use of, uh, of mana drain. And if she did, she got lucky. I mean, it wasn't really set up. Alright, so she traverses with four card types to get what threat? on no green mana. Um, Liliana is uncastable. Jace the Mind Sculptor, possibly. Jace could plus. Um, what did she get? Drag Tusk. Okay. Well, I think we get through now well we can. We unfortunately cannot prevent the life gain. She'll go back up to 12. We have 7 points in hand, so we need 5 more damage. Yeah, Thrag Tusk is unfortunate, because we actually do have very close to lethal in hand. Like, if we had hit, um... If we had another land in play, we could actually go for lethal. She'll go for her, her Tusk here. So we need five more points of burn. She's going to draw a lot of cards this turn. I don't know if she'll she'll sit back on counter magic and try to like, or if she'll attack with this tusk. If she attacks with tusk, I am more than happy to attack her back. I didn't like her use of the, the land to get the, uh, I mean, I see why she did it. She had the mana drain in hand. All right, personal tutor for what, Life from the Loam, or what are you going to get with this? Life from the Loam doesn't really worry me. Like, that's, it's, well, on this deck it doesn't. In, like, a control deck, it's a pain in the ass. Um, I'm not worried about, so we were probably losing this one, but, you know, she had the right cards at the right time and drew into, um, drew into the capability to get to a Thragtos after we made her hellbent while well, we still had two cards in hand. Um, Natural Order is actually, I think, okay. Um, do you attack with Tusk here? You do not. All right. Alrighty. Land. Well, she obviously needs to find mana at some point. We still need to find this five damage somehow. Um, like, if she fetched and we drew a char, then that could do it. All right, you're going to flip Jace and recast what? Could just be an Abrupt Decay to kill my thing. Um, could be a Duress. If it's Duress, I'd probably just pop all this burn off real fast, like. She ditched a tapped green source. Do you have another green source? Um, okay, Traverse. What other life gainer? Obstinate and Bailoff may be in the deck. Okay. Or it could be um, Courser. So we know she has... So she Her, her green man is all jacked up right now. If we could hit a Wasteland, it'd be probably pretty good here. Um, Alright, Obstinate Bayloth's in the deck, but you're still short on green mana. There's your other green mana. What are our outs here? Our outs are she goes to fetch and tap out for this thing. Hmm.
Yeah, maybe Mandarin was right. I think Mandarin was actually wrong. She didn't have anything to go into. Yeah, I'm looking at how she played this. I don't really care for it. I think she should have gotten the green mana before. I think her her game plan would have played out a lot better. Um, she obviously drew into the Traverse, so maybe she didn't have a need for it. But green mana is more relevant to this style of deck, I tend to think. Um, so she's going to gain four more up to 15. We have still have seven, so we're, we're not even halfway there anymore. Okay. Um, hmm. One line of play could be to fire blast the, uh, if she attacks here. Let's see what she does here. If she attacks here, maybe we just fire blast after activating the Genju. Are you just going to sit back? Okay. Well, we're going to play this one out because it is a man land. It is a threat. Um, she could blow these lands up. We'll see. I mean, at some point, I'm going to be able to hard cast Fire Blast. I don't know if I would do that, but it is an option, obviously. If she goes to blow up my man land, I will gladly um, pop the Shard Volley. Yep, that's fine. This card's interesting to me. Um, I don't. I just think the card is kind of weak. Um, she put all the cards in her graveyard. Okay. Let's just chip at her a little bit here. Nope. Little pieces at a time. Things are still in the deck. Okay, Abrupt Decay for... Probably for the Genju. I would assume for Genju, yes. For Genju, okay. Well, Genju is now gone. It's just a plain old mountain again, unenchanted. We tapped an extra black mana. Um, was that a whoopsie? Or we got something else we're doing here? Are we attacking? Okay. We're just attacking with this thing. Okay. I'm fine with that. Forgot to use Jace. No. This card is actually interesting here. Because we can actually have some pretty big upset blocks. Okay. Yeah, I actually do. Well, do you have, like, a big threat, that, like a t Primeval Titan here? If she has, like, Primeval Titan, that'll probably end the game pretty quickly. 
All right, she's going to natural order into something. I would presume probably like a prime time, which that's fine. She'll get her combo online here. Okay, Primeval Titan. It's a big gain. Um, being at 17 life is obviously uh, risky. We have two turn cycles, essentially, so I need to figure out a way to get through this. Um, and I don't know if it's viable here. Um, it may be going to game three. If she attacks with both, there are definitely lines that give us outs here. All right, she's not going to. All right, so if we fire blast. This thing. We can make this a 2 1. I'm afraid it's not good enough. Um, let's pass it back. We may be able to architect a situation where we can get her here, but it's going to be, it's going to involve like, I don't know what the draw would have to be. All right, brainstorm, possibly looking for counter magic. Okie doke. It's going to have to involve something pretty special, I think. Okay, I'm going to take six here. Because frankly, like, if I don't, if I can't draw into a win this next turn, like, the game's just over. I mean, I could, like, Fire Blast the Ob's Bailoth and then, like, you know... Ah, uh, wait, could I? No, I really couldn't here. All right. Yeah, we really need, like, a Falter effect, I think. Um... All right, that's not going to do it, so let's go ahead and concede. And go back to boards. Um, I don't think she has... I think we boarded correctly. I don't think she has access and want this back in. Um, probably want to cut out one inefficient card. Like, I think... Maybe Bogart and Ram Gang is too slow. Let's try this right here. Punishing Fire is actually interesting, too, but she doesn't have a lot of weenie creatures. I, I think that shines. Stigma Lasher is kind of slow. Um, I kind of like what we did here. Cursed uh, Scroll was kind of just a recursive threat. Against this, actually, we probably should now have uh, Chandra in the board, um, the Chandra Torch of Defiance. I think she's actually a pretty good addition to this deck. Uh, she, I think she is a much better card than uh, the Enchantment that does the same thing, like where you get to draw the, the free card. Because she just, you know, she can just dome them too. If it's a mountain, I mean, you're obviously not even getting mountains. You're just putting those in the trash pile, the Exile Zone, because uh, she's just doing two. It turns into a shock, essentially, which is pretty great. Um, so we'll see. I think that was closer than she thinks it was. Um, you know, I, if um, the discard was actually relevant, because if we had had the Flames of the Blood Hand, we had the win. Um, she would have stopped the life gain on the turn she cast, and then had enough mana on the following turn to do, you know, I think four over her life total, or no, three over her life total, because we were one damage short at one point um, with, uh, with Fire Blast. So I think we can get her on this deck. I think um, having the play is going to be relevant, and uh, hopefully getting into some of our board. Um, Will be will be good as well. So, what do we want to see ideally? Probably a turn one threat, followed up by like you know some a turn two threat, like an existing threat, not like a, a burn spell, and then into like a blood moon or something like that would probably be pretty good. We shall see. Um, yes, I would like to play first. This hand is phenomenal. I couldn't ask for a better hand here. Um, if this hand can't win, then I don't. I don't think Red Deck Wins has an out to winning if this hand cannot. Um, so turn one, Goblin Guide into turn two, Teetering Peaks, Grim Lava Mancer, turn three, Sulfuric Vortex um, with Fire Blast backup. So this hand is ass nine. So we'll see. I mean, if the deck can't win, then if the deck can't win with this, then it's, it's you know, that's what it is, I suppose. Is this going to be... 
a death right shaman or it means her draw is stellar too um, let me go ahead and delete a video real fast guys all right we'll do this one Alrighty, so she did what? Oh, suspended this. Well, land is not really what we want to see right now, um, but I can't complain because this initial draw was just so powerful. I want to get her in a tizzy about answering my board as fast as I can. Come on, Goblin Guide, get in there, you. You're not going backwards? All right, little lag there. Corsair of Crufix, good card right there. Um, I mean, there's credence to just, like, dropping the Sulfuric Vortex and doming her instantly. Like, if she taps down for something low. All right, Ponder. Yeah, if we get to put this Sulfuric Vortex online and we don't get, like, bebbed, if we don't get, like, blasted when we put it down, I think we are, are highly favored to win. Um, even if, I mean, if she's forced to answer it on her turn, that's still bad for her. And worst case, I could fire blast the, uh, the courser out of the way and just continue to go. And I'd have a lot of food at that point in time for the, the Grim. You probably put that into play tapped, which is, is cool. So now unless she has days, if she has days, she's putting a land back into her hand. I'm going to do this uh, because I don't want to draw any more lands. Like, I just want gas at this point. I have a ton of lands. Like, I've drawn, what, two at this point? But again, like, I really, I really can't complain. Um, Force of Will would get this too. But this is, like, one of the stronger draws, I think. Um, so turn off auto yields. Let's hit her for three. Marsh Flats in hand. You know, at this point, like, I probably just go all in on this stuff. Let's just dome her and say, hey, you got, like, no time, man. I just don't want to get countered on this. All right, your go. Six life. A couple turns left. How many counters does this have? Yeah, this has three counters on it. That's not going to be relevant. And you're dead to Grim Lava Mancer and or Goblin Guide. Um, if you don't play this Courser, which you cannot gain life on, do you need to block? You also need to answer the Sulfuric Vortex. Not possible. Y yeah, yeah. The opener was sick. Yeah, no, well. This is like, I think about as fast as you can make red. I may need to relook some stuff. Well, there's the Everlasting Torment. Uh, looking kind of embarrassing right now. And go. Yeah, so this is the weakness of this style of deck. Um, and I kind of wanted to show it and put it up so folks knew, like, Loam is not an unbeatable st uh, strategy. It is a very powerful control strategy. But when you go this low to the ground, like, you know, mono one and two drops, and, like, stuff that doesn't cost any mana, like Fire Blast, and, like, just drop card economy down out of nowhere, like, you can just, you can get them. Like you can get them really bad um, with with this style of uh, this style of deck. Let's uh let's do death and taxes against her now. Um, one I haven't played the deck in a while and I kind of want to. And um, yeah, yeah, that was like pretty much the sickest draw you could possibly have. I'm gonna keep this, and I'm not gonna have a land drop on turn two. I don't mind keeping this just because I have tax. 
and I don't think she can not play lands, and I can draw a lot of one-drops in this deck. So if she wants to try to play around tax, she can be my guest. Um, the only Relic Order is not bad either, because it is, like, one of the few ways to deal with, like, you know, random, you know, enchantments or, or artifacts that she may have, too. So it's kind of got some flexibility. Um, I am going to play a land out here and just and just cast my first threat, which is going to end up being probably the Relic Seeker, so I can find a relevant... Uh, um, Oh, this deck should actually have Stoneforge in it now. It does not, I don't think. I need to recheck this list. Did I update it? The Red Deck Wins deck does not need any updates um, based on the format change. It's already a, a, a good tiered archetype. Um, this deck obviously gains a bunch when it has... Um, yeah, let me check. I don't think I updated this, which is my bad, because I normally keep this deck pretty updated based on the ban list. Yeah, no, it doesn't, doesn't have the updates. It probably should have. That's too bad. Um, so we don't have Stoneforge Mystic right now. Um, she may be spell snaring this, or she may just be fetching. Um, after this point, I will probably not play any more lands I draw. Um, I just didn't have a threat to present, and I need to I need to present threats with this deck to keep her under pressure and force her to react. So if she's forced to react as opposed to like go into combo tron mode, like that generally, you know, ties her up. Um, she could just have, you know, like the combo in hand, you know, and just win too. Um, it's certainly not unbeatable. However, if I'm getting to Palace Jailer, like, you know, 2020 Merit Laces, like, that's pretty damn good. Um, so I think aggro is actually in a good place if everyone just tries to go loam, loam control. Um, I like where it's at, so I'm not playing that. Um, I'll attack if you want to kill this thing, and I'll play on an Imposing Sovereign, and, um, and that'll be that. I do like getting free cards, though. Yep, this is getting Abrupt Decayed. Oh, go for the throat. Okay. What would be best for me? I mean, if she misses a land drop and I and she plays out like a Sylvan Library, that would probably be the best line for me. Or if she makes a land drop, like cantrips and plays Sylvan Library, that would probably be the best. Um, okay, she's she's playing into the tax. That's what I figured was going to happen. Um, okay, Jace. Chase is a strong one. Yeah, I would like to do this very much so. All right. Well, let's see if we can out aggro the loam deck before it becomes too late. So this may be a bad strategy trying to uh, set up land tax. Um, I really didn't have a better threat to play then. Now I'm going to play this little guy because... And that was actually an error on my part. I should have fetched to get it out of my hand. Cool thing is, though, I mean, if she does nothing or casts, like, some irrelevant cards, we can uh, Palace Jailer and get rid of the Jace before he flips and makes our threats weaker. Okay, this is a good sign. It means that it's not likely she's going to flip her Jace unless she, like, cycles in response to this trigger. She could already have Loam in hand, which would be which would be strong here. Um, I think I would have wanted to flip the Jays completely. All right, Wall of Blossoms coming into play. Taft though, she doesn't seem to want to flip her Jays. All right, more lands. Um, she may have a counter spell. That is certainly possible. Like a Mana Drain or something like that. So I think this turn until she like starts using her mana for something, I just start pumping up this Stud of War. And maybe play like a two drop threat on or something like that. All right, Wind Brisk Heights. It's a very good card. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill some more recordings here, guys. Sorry. Yep, delete those, please. Um, do I want to get drained here? Is the question. I think I, I think I go for it, guys. I think we just do this. I think we go for the Palace Jailer because the upside... Oh, it resolves. All right. Um, we're going to get the... Oh, come on, you. Get the Jace out of the way. So her filtering and, and her ability to kind of disrupt us is kind of reduced. She has no attackers of note. So this seems like it's a good place for us. I can't think of any Flash creatures. I don't think she's running Shamble Shark in her deck. All right. Yeah, you're just fetching right here. Putting her on the back foot here. Um, I 
this could all be stopped. Uh, she could just have a damnation, but I mean, I'm still drawing extra cards. I mean, and my hand size, due to due to tax, obviously, is, is pretty large. Tax operates in a similar way to Loam, obviously far less powerful. Um, you know, it only gets, obviously, certain types of lands, uh, the basic sort. But on a monocolored white deck like this, it tends to be pretty good. Um, this could be a damnation. Is that what we're seeing here? A five mana spell. It's an X spell? Is it a green or black sun zenith? Yep, black sun zenith is what it was. Um, so not a problem though. We still get to uh, to land tax here. She's down to four cards. She has a negative three one wall, and. Other than the game freezing, it appears that um, appears we're going to get to tax, and I will. I will tax for all the deck's worth. Um, the cool thing is we do get to keep the um, we do get to keep the emblem, which means we're still drawing extra cards. All right. Well, it appears Moto has failed. I'm going to relog in, guys, and we'll be back. All right, guys. It would appear we are back online. To an extent, Moto is still kind of slowly waking up again. Yes, I would like to do this. That's interesting. My hand rearranged itself. I'm going to discard these. I acknowledge that. Um, I don't think I'm going to play out the Windburst Kites this turn, but it may be worth it. Oh, wow. That's pretty good, actually. Um, I think I'm going to leave this thing up. This guy seems good. I'm just going to play him now. I don't want to get countered. Well, the White Weenie deck is out carding the Loam deck. That's a day to be seen, I suppose. Given we've had a pretty strong draw as well. But this is what this deck is meant to do. <clears throat> I like putting the Aven Mind Sensor up because I feel like I'm decently well ahead and the way she changes that is by tutoring for combo pieces to stop us. You know, like a timely crop rotation or an intuition or a mystical tutor or um, whatever that uh, the other blue tutor is, the sorcery speed one that puts it on top of your deck for sorcery or instant. That may just be sorcery. All right, Wasteland, you can blow up my Windburst Kites if you like. Well, relatively soon here, we're going to have uh, about zero lands left. You can counter this if you like. I kind of wanted her to. The wall must block the 1-1. One, one. Yep. Okay, we have a fast effect of some sort. What could it be? Could be a Notion Thief. Okay, just draw a bunch of cards. Well, again, this is a Loam deck, so Factor Fiction is going to be a challenging card, likely for us. Not very challenging here. Um, you can have one of those two piles. Takes the three for already. Mm -hmm. One of them was a fetch land, though, which means you're just finding in the top four, so it was kind of not a card. So take three here. I think I play out the Skyfisher 
still. Maybe I don't. Yep, you have to block there. Well, we're both at seven cards, but our board has things on it, so I feel like we can't be that bad off. And our top deck is probably more alive. Our card power is obviously a lot less, though. Hmm. Could be a damnation, which, frankly, at this point is fine. Um, I don't really mind that much because I have strong follow-ups. Okay, we get T Delve. She goes down to five. Do you have a critter threat? Well, your Tasker's in the yard. Yeah, I'm still going to do this. I know I'm going to bin a bunch of them, which is not per se card advantage. It's not actual card advantage, but it's, it's virtual card advantage. Because you can find stuff like, you know, Caracas. play this this old gal out i don't see mana or mana drain mana up so i think i'm fine with just uh losing this thing to one for one removal do you have heroes downfall okay Well, you got to string something together, man. How are you going to beat me? They're at the dubious low, low life total of five. Just passing it. Well, a drain smells like it's in the air. I'm just going to play this little fella out. Okay. Not going to play lands into my own tax. Um, I want to kind of retain them, but not, not kill, crush more of my cards. So the spirit on its own is lethal next turn. Um, I do have six lands in play. I can pump this to a 2-4 to a four four at her end step. So she does have to find a way to deal with it or bounce it back to my hand or something. I don't want to go ham, though, because if she does have, like, the damnation or something like that, or she has the mana drain, like, a three drop could be detrimental to my health here. But this will become an 8-8 flyer. So, like, playing on a bigger threat, it needs to fly if she's going to do that. So she kind of wants to answer this. We've kind of put her in a, in a position where, like, she needs to answer what we are up to. Um, that's fine. Do you have a threat to follow it up with? No. The mana drain mana is still open right now. So I think, yep, I'm going to do this again. So there are absolutely zero lands left in the deck. Um, one interesting line could be, that's all the lands out of the deck. Um, oh, well, that's a good one. I'm going to play him out, see if we, we sl slide him by. She may crack her fetch in response. And if she gets a tap land, I'm going to probably play the Elsbeth. Kind of want to force her to take damage if she doesn't have... Uh, she should have Tropical still left in her deck. That would be my guess. Yep, okay. It's a Mana Drain. 
She hasn't really done anything with like, tons of mana regardless, though, so, like, I don't think I need to be that worried. This is a counterspell of some sort. I don't know which one, but it feels like a counterspell. If it's not, she's in a lot of trouble, because this thing right here is a pain in the ass to deal with. If you don't have white, it's pretty tough. You have to exile it. Dig through time, probably looking for what? Force of Will? Well, I'm glad it wasn't Mana Drain, because I kind of wanted this thing to resolve. I, I could have gone for Elsbeth, but I wanted to also be able to play the Relic Order. This is a 2-2, because she's on 4 life after forcing her to fetch there um, with the Arbiter, um, which forces her to answer the board. And right now, she's still in a position where she has to answer the board. So I kind of like where we're at. Maybe we play out the Order anyways, though. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, ideally, I want to be able to present two threats next turn in the form of Elizabeth and some other creature threat. If we do get Wrath, uh, not Wrath, but if we if something sizable pops up, because I think Elizabeth puts me over the top to kill her with one of my cards. So maybe I do just play out the Relic Order here. Like, what is the worst thing that could happen to us? The worst thing that happens to us is like Crucible of Worlds, a sword with no creature. Swords are five drops. She doesn't have a haste creature available to her right now, or a flash creature available to her on one wasteland in play. So. Yeah, I kind of like where we're at. I think we're getting there. This is obviously a more challenging, it has more play to it than the Red Deck Wins match. The Red Deck Wins is just a faster deck. Um, so if you drew Force of Will, I, I don't, yeah, that's fine. I think, you know, if it's Force of Will, it's Force of Will. No, it's not. Um, if you have a Daze, you can Daze the Relic Warder. But I just want to make the Hollowed Spirit Keeper. I mean, maybe I'm a, do I want to use this ability? I guess it doesn't really matter if I use it or not. Because there are no more basic lands, so... Okie doke. There are no more basic lands, so... For our best draws in deck, probably Geddon. If we can land a Geddon. So these are two best cards in the top seven. Um, which is pretty frightening, but like I think it's going to be tough to deal with the Spirit Keeper. Especially if I'm able to pump it with Elsbeth. And send it over the top, or another threat over the top. Drive Militant's also an interesting card. I mean, I think a lot of people play it in White Weenie, uh, but its ability is actually a lot more relevant than you'd think in the Loam matchup. Loaming right now is dangerous for health, too. That's more lost life. And actually, it only gets a basic, if I'm not mistaken, because I don't think there is um, another non-basic. All right. That's cool. So that can make a lot of creature cards, or it can make a lot of things... Uh... Yep. All right, what do we got? Well, we have to delete more files, guys, unfortunately. Um, well, there are many more to delete. Oh, cancel. Um, we're doing this. Okay, I'll put a white man into my mana pool. What did you find the drain? You're cycling, okay. Well, you can't fetch with the Verdant Catacombs unless you want to turn off both of your Scavenging Ooze activations. Hero Blade Holds, dead and gone. I mean, I'm just going to go for the win here. Could have force of will still, but I mean, even then, all right, yeah, that's what I thought. Like, that's that's lethal. All right, so against Loam. Rest in peace seems good. Samurai the Pale Curtain seems good. Um, I like Winter Orb a lot. 
Hushwing Griff is interesting. I actually like the sort of light and shadow a bit, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, what's worse? I like Cataclysm or Parallax Wave 2 to protect my own stuff. Um, maybe this card is not as good. And then... Mirror Crusader's got to be a good game almost. I don't actually like Hero Blade Hold as much in this in this matchup. Cataclysm's interesting because it could just like blow her out. But I mean, if she gets something going, like we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. If we uh, if we do that, we really need to update this though. <laughs> I'm just looking through right now. Like we need to update this list. We have a Relic Seeker in it. Um, Yoten runs actually randomly. It's pretty cool here too. Um, we're gonna be in the draw, so we can take out one land. Yeah, let's do that. You go disenchant too. Disenchant screen. Crackdown is also interesting. I don't know. That may not be may not be a great card for the board. Hushwing Griff's probably good against her deck too. Probably decent. She has a lot of ETB. It looks like critters. So I guess I'm kind of glad I did this because I'm just I, I don't know. I, you know, you playing against Loam is like I think a learned skill set. It's a slower deck, so you just you really it's not that challenging to play against. You just need to be smart about how you do it. This hand is interesting, and against some matchups, I would keep it, but this is a definite mull. All right, this is a keep. Um, that's going straight to the bottom. I need to get lands with this this hand, but um, the Mirror and Crusader should be pretty decent. King Whiskers is fine. If we can cap it with a Wrath, that would be the best. Pass it back. Hopefully we see something that we can uh, journey to nowhere um, on this next turn. I doubt we will. I mean, Tarmogoyf would be, like, probably it. Like, she has Secure Tribe Elder, which is kind of, like, not a card you can uh, journey to nowhere. Um, and then we're hoping to hit a land of some sort. Okay, that's not a card we're going to we're gonna get rid of. Which cards did she find? She found no lands. That's rough beats. Sometimes that card misses. Land? Land? Yuck. I mean, we could go down to... I'm not going to do that. No, that's that's terrible play. I could play out the Council's Lieutenant by killing my own planes, but that's really bad. In this situation, especially, we're not like... It's not like our last top deck to win. Um, I don't think we're favored at this point, though, because we did miss there, and we're going to be behind significantly. Oh, game's over. I'll just concede it here. Well, maybe we don't. She's going to get her land combo. Can I beat this? I actually can with Ghost Quarter. It depends on what combo she gets here, though. So Recurring Nightmare um, off of that Seder Wayfinder was actually very good. So I guess Seder Wayfinder was pretty good there. Um, if she gets her combo, can I beat it? I'd have to draw a land exactly this. I have to draw a land, an untapped land of any source this next turn to do it. That would involve Journey to Nowhering the Primeval Titan, and then killing the Thespian Stage to leave the the friggin' um... Oh, she doesn't even get that. Interesting. Okay. Um, you would have been good a long time ago, but you're not good enough now. I'm gonna... I guess here we just journey the Titan... And say go and see if we can string something together, but missing twice is bad. I don't think we should have gone to five on that. I think that hand was perfectly keepable on the draw um, with two lands in the cards we had, but we just didn't get there, obviously. Um, okay, you're going to kill my, my, my kill land. We could play Samurai this next turn, though, and it's, it's pretty good. All right, we're just missing, like, champions here. We're going to go ahead and concede this one and go back to... Go back to Go back to the play. Um, that's what happens when you're when you're aggro. Sometimes you just get blown out. Um, what else do we want? I don't know if we want this actually. Let's just go as efficient as possible, maybe. Yeah, let's go with this. Let's go with this. Let's see if we can get a good Ravages turn in before she's able to establish her combo lock. Um, no, she didn't go for it there, which I think was smart because if she had, if I draw land, like I probably just I, I hose her pretty well. Yep, I would like to play first. Um, yeah, this hand's a keep. I do like the Dryad Militant. Like, this is not a great, great hand, but it's good enough. Um, obviously, with this kind of hand, we want to just draw lands off the top. Um, but being able to exile her spells 
when they go in means Loam is dead. Loam can uh, only be activated or used one time. We'll play Mistress Factory out next turn. Um, and uh, Okay, Ancestral Visions is fine. Cool. Good draw there. Good draw. Um, we're just going to play out the Legionnaire. And next turn, it may be a Winter Orb turn. I don't want to jam into um, into two open or two blue open mana. So if that's the case, then okay, let's well, not. All right, search for tomorrow. Alrighty. We'll get Winter Orbed. Taking one, always a plus. We'll go down two to take her down one. Okay, green mana. Are you going to cast something? Are you going to do an abrupt decay on the winter orb? That's good. We know you're going to be possible at five next turn on mana. Um, okay, crop rotation for Mazabeth. I'm fine with that too. Like that's not going to solve this problem. Like what could she get that would stop this aggression? Mazabeth? Mazabeth is fine. Like it's just going to stop three damage right now. But it's a tapped. It's a land that doesn't do make mana and is tapped. Um. Yeah. Okay, she finds a basic. I'm attacking. Okay, so you're going to get another land here. And you got to cast a pretty relevant spell, I think, to stop us here. So you're searching for tomorrow. Your virtual six, though, with the marsh flats. All right, five mana. It's a big game. Nothing. Okay, more green mana. You run Vendillion Click or something? Okay. That's yeah, that's good for me. I'm I'm very happy with that. Um Well, what do you want to do? You're taking 5-6. You can't even fetch right now. So your fetch lands are dead. So the fetch land you just took is still dead. So you need to draw actual land. So you're a possible 3-man of this turn. You're going to have infinite cards, but Winter Orb's going to get you here, I think. This is the power of Orb. I think we got her. Um... As per the Red Deck Wins matchup, you saw our first the first game that's on this recording. Um, you know, okay. We we tend to lose the ones we're on the draw. They're sort of light and shadow, great card, but I mean, when you're uh when you're under the aggro lock, it's uh it's something to behold, obviously.
All right, so is that game? So that's the power of aggro. Um, well, I wouldn't ever say aggro is powerful, but it tends to punish the more latent strategies. Um, that was why we actually an updated list without Stoneforge Mystic and the Batter Skull and all the, the cool new stuff for White Weenie or Death and Taxes. Um, and I think it did pretty well there. Um, you know, it, it acquitted itself as as to be expected. Um, you know, and uh, and managed to grind out the win. Um, we had pretty good draws both games, but I mean, I think both decks are built decently well too. So I mean, what are you what are you going to do? You know, sometimes you draw them well. That red deck wins draw in the third game was just ass nine. That was like you couldn't have asked for a better hand in any given matchup. Like it was just so fast. That was a blistering hand. Um, there may be faster kills, but like that was good. Like that was that was pretty much where you want to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's kind of just a quick clinic in like how you beat the loam decks and the tutoring decks and really the investment decks, um, the higher variance decks that um, that are looking to uh, combo control you. Um, you just go under them, and uh, if you go under them, you know, or you try to outvalue them, but I don't think many decks are going to outvalue loam based decks. Um, I think you just go underneath them and you beat them up like that. So I hope this was uh, informational and like I think how you need to approach the meta. You know, if we start seeing a lot of loam decks, I think aggro and, and white weenie will be well positioned. Um, you know, in the meta. Um, obviously, then 4CB will make a resurgence because it's a good mid-range deck that crushes red and crushes white, um, but will tend to lose to loam, you know. And I guess, you know, why I wanted to also do this video is to show that, you know, like, well, this loam style strategy and some of these new cards are very powerful, you know, there are very simple things to just beat them on a regular and consistent basis, like, you know, white aggro and red aggro. Do they have ounce to it? Certainly. But if the deck is boarded well and is played well, you know, you're going to continually, I think, show that um, it's a very winnable matchup. And um, it has bad matchups, too. And they're out there. And, um, you know, you just have to build it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. Maybe we'll play another game. But uh, I actually have to take a break to eat some food. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short clinic on how to beat Loam. Because uh, I've been showing you Loam all week. And I thought this would be helpful. All right. Thanks. And take care.